Hello and welcome back to Let's Play True to Grand with me, Bring It On. Talk to this woman. Uh, the room you enter reeks of stale cigarette smoke and damp. And damp. Uh, part of it is being used as a makeshift laundry, so it seems. Inside the door, you're immediately accosted by a withered, nervous old woman with a cigarette clamped in her teeth. Snow on boots. Don't walk around here like you own the place. What you want. Um, can you answer a few questions for me? Oh, an honorable Lao Wai. Rare like a pearl and local oysters. I can listen to you for some time. May I ask your name? My name is Zhao Zhao. Why does this matter? Why do you need to know? You don't. Uh, what do you do around here? You a fool? I'm a laundry lady. You already know that. You ask to annoy me? Don't do that. Even my unlawful husband, Ivan Doe, learned this lesson. He is one annoying bastard. Huh, we can talk to Ivan Doe about that, I think. Uh, tell me about Trudegrad. Uh, what's there to tell? I'm not local. Life in the docks is good. The generosity of honorable cousin Ho makes life easy. Outside the docks is nothing for me. A dark forest and a hungry step. And what do you do around here? Or what can you tell me about Ho? Oh, you're so inquisitive. Sure, let me tell you. Not. Get out of here and ask him yourself, spy. Emma starts flailing her hands at you, like a mama bird chasing a predator away from the nest. You back away. Fine, fine. As you wish. The skinny woman continues smoking nervously as she paces the damp laundry back and forth. When she sees you, she stretches her back and taps some ash from her cigarette. Why do you always come here? Talk loud and clear. Ask some questions. Uh, what rumors are going around the docks these days? Ask your mother. Maybe she walks around the docks all day, talking to rough boy sailors. Not me. I don't ask anything. Don't talk. Don't have interests. I wash clothes. Spend time in tea house. Talk about business only. Uh-huh. Uh, care to change the subject then? Talk and go. I have work to do. I like to use the laundry services. The woman taps the ash from her cigarette onto the floor, studies you carefully, and shakes her head. Adventures and dogs do not get service. Nothing personal. I look for laundry lady elsewhere. Now why don't you service dogs? Because dogs don't have clothes. Stupid Lao Wai. Well, I'm sorry, Zulbaris was very well dressed in his spiked armor, or whatever it was from uh, the Dead City. Uh, why don't you service adventurers? Laundry Lady rolls her eyes and starts counting off on her fingers every reason for denying you service. Dangerous connections. You get shot. I never get payment for doing laundry. Next is blood. Blood and sweat everywhere, even on underpants. Disgusting to touch and stinky too. Another reason. Bullet holes everywhere, even in underpants. Makes fabric easy to tear. I tear your bullet hole underpants by accident. You come in and complain. No way. No service for you. Uh, by the way, where do the locals get money for laundry services? They don't. No money. The traveling merchants have money. My honorable cousin Ho has money. Alright, I got it. Bye. She said she was married unlawfully to Ivan Doe. Up here jamming. Alright, so I did miss someone here in the tea house. Let's go talk to him. Or I assume his cousin Ho, unless it's this guy back here. If he has anything new to say first. Or Uncle Ho? I guess she calls him cousin. Alright, anyway. Bell man in an elegant Chinese tunic suit watches over the smoke filled tea house. When he sees you, he bows formally. Ni hao. Welcome to Uncle Ho's uh, tea house. Tea house, huh? Can I get some tea in this joint? The old Chinese man loses his calm for a second and looks around carefully. We deal in herbs here, Zin Zhen. Traditional Chinese medicine, if you know what I mean. I uh, suppose I do. Show me the menu. Might be worth buying some mushrooms. I don't even pay anything for this.
Uh, cool. Can you answer a few questions for good measure? He who asks questions risks appearing foolish. He who does not ask stays a fool all his life. Ask away, Zen Zen. Uh, tell me about yourself, Uncle Ho. Open your eyes quickly, but your mouth slowly. That is my motto. Therefore, I will only tell you my rank in the Guangzhou. I am a millennium old entrepreneurial dignitary of great fortune, who is barely unequal to the sky. And what do you know of Trudegrad? What do I know of Trudegrad? I know that the local authorities are like a boat, and the people are like the water. Water may carry a boat, or it may sink it. Can you tell me about the docks? This place, as well as the whole of Trudegrad, is like a male monastery built in front of a female one. Even if it seems like nothing goes on, something does. Like rounds in Zen. But be careful. Very, very careful. Uh, no any rumors? I've heard that the Trudegrad authorities are making protection deals with all kinds of bandits, like the ones from Forisabad, the Nomad City. I'm sure they have their reasons, but I do not think it is wise. I see. Can we change the subject? Uncle Ho responds with a short bow, which you take to mean he agrees. Now listen, Uncle Ho. I have a complaint about one of your workers. Uncle Ho smiles for appearance's sake, but his eyes betray that his conversation isn't to his liking. Hmm. Who are you talking about? The big fella right there. Point at Big Bow. Uh, yeah. No one. Which is subject. I'm not going to complain about Big Bow. He hasn't done anything wrong yet. Alright. We did level up. Take care of that real fast. 10 points here, and I guess a few points in a speechcraft. We're sitting on six points. The Cautious Thief. I can see that being really useful. I don't know how many books we're going to find, so I don't know if Bookworm is going to be worth grabbing or not. I forgot what I wanted up here. I should have put points in it crafting instead. Never mind, we are uh Well into the negatives, I'm not gonna bother with that. Hopefully we can get a companion that can craft for us. <laughs> that would be the ideal scenario. Uh, this might be worth getting. You know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab... Cautious Thief. We'll start just looting people's, uh, people while they sleep. Oh, there's a mine right here. Is this some sort of monument? No, it is not. That is a mine. Alright. Your gaze comes to rest on a gorgeous redhead smoking a thin cigarette. She notices you too, and comes closer, rolling her hips seductively. Wanna have some fun, sailor? Don't be shy. You are in a brothel after all. Uh, tell me your name. It's no fun having... It's no fun having fun anonymously. Call me Veronica Vanilla, pretty boy. The woman winks playfully at you. Did you say vanilla? Like hard candy? Mm-hmm. The people suck on hard candy. Well, in my case, the sucking is performed by the candy itself. Ah, uh, jeez. Can we just chat and get to know one another? You wouldn't like chatting with me. You're into running your mouth. You should talk to Lena Stanislavskaya. She must be around here somewhere. Uh, what's your role in this brothel? Lemon looks confused for a moment, then starts giggling, as if she just heard the best joke of her life. 
Hello? Is anybody home? You spend so much time at sea, you forgot how things run on land. I'm a prostitute dummy. I sleep with people for cash. I see. Bye. A young woman wearing a white dress and a battered dog collar gazes at you with large, fearful eyes. Oh, Master, I, I sure hope you're not here to punish me for all the bad things I've done. I've been such a naughty girl. I hope I'm not going to get whipped for it. What? What did you do to deserve punishment? Um, well, I was a very bad girl. I lied, I schemed, I borrowed a lot of money to pay for an education, and started working as a prostitute to make ends meet. I got hooked on Black Lotus, too. Getting a little bit more real, isn't it? Uh, judging by the glassy gleam in her eyes and trembling lower lip, it seems she said too much. This is no longer a playful act. Uh, maybe we could discuss something else. I'm not worthy of conversing with you, Master. At least tell me your name. Call me Nadia Sabu Sabova. Cool. Is that a real name or your nickname? It's my real name, I swear. Uh, tell me about your role in this brothel. Oh, I'm like a cute little pet waiting for someone to take control and own me. Now someone would whip some sense into me. That would put me in my place. Probably. It might take more than one session. I see. Bye. I gotta waste money here. An important looking woman in a silk dress slowly strolls through the brothel's main hall, watching the guests and smoking a fat cigarillo uh, stuffed into a bake light cigarette holder. She reminds you of a sated yet dangerous predator. Still dangerous predator. Welcome to Madame Clax. Fine establishment, pretty boy. We have men and women to suit any taste here. Don't believe me? Try them out. Hey there, you Madame Clack, right? The Clack or Clique? Yes, I'm in charge here. I see. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I believe I can find some time for... I'm sorry, I believe I can find time for a few questions. And what's your name? Instead of replying, Madam wags her finger at you with a sly grin. You already know her name, silly. Uh, tell me about this district. The docks are the heart of any city. The heart needs love to keep on breeding. Uh, that's why I can't think of a better place for my establishment. Yes, it can get dangerous. We've got that covered as well. By a mighty organization, no less. What can you tell me about Trudegrad? Trudegrad is a city of contrasts. Poverty in some areas. Uh, riches galore in 7th heaven. Where everyone, regardless of social status, needs some loving attention once in a while. That's why I don't worry about class struggle affecting my business. Uh, what rumors are making the rounds these days? I heard the big shots in 7th heaven arrange talks with the local bandits and settlements. Why would they do that? And why now? I don't know. I see. Uh, can we talk about something else? As you wish, pretty boy. You're boasting about a wide selection of services in your establishment. Is there a way for me to test this claim? The woman eyes you as if you were a total fool. She shrugs and replies in a matter-of-fact way. Talk to my workers, pretty boy. Ask what they're offering. I'm sure you can find anything and everything you desire within these walls. I'll do just that. Run off. An extremely underdressed muscle man is watching you. Finally, he smirks as he comes closer. His every movement is exaggerated and smooth, as if he's posing for a crowd of invisible fans. Another weakling, I see. You sure you want to call me that? Ahem. Seems like I was mistaken. That's right. And who are you exactly? Who? Someone knows a real man must be strong. The strong man looks you straight in the eye as he rubs his stomach. His pronounced abs are visible through his tight, sleeveless shirt. Want to see how strong I am? We can arrange a private showing. I'm sure you can. Uh, what's your name, big guy? My name is Yarpolk Bulov. You do well to remember that name. Uh, can you remind me of your role in the brothel? Do you mean the fetish I provide? You can call it the manly man role. If you mean everything I do around here, I'm also a part-time guard. Manly man, huh? Anyone softer around here? 
Darn. See one of those guys. In that case, go find Rocco Sparkler, a local sissy. Crap. I was hoping I'd finally met a normal dude for a change. Um, thanks for the information. Walk away confused. Alright, we're getting to know everybody, slowly but surely. A lean young man with a red hanky sticking out of his back pocket rolls his eyes playfully and claps his hands. My god, what a man. A true warrior. Such grace. Such strength. He simply must have a military background, boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, kinda. I'm a mercenary, an adventurer, and a strider of forgotten roads. Why? I knew it. Rocco Sparkler is the only godchild of the famous General Nasty from Krasno. And therefore, since the military backgrounds is in my blood. Regrettably, I never served in the army myself. Well, sorry about that. Uh-huh. But mayhap not all is lost. What if a big, strong warrior like you showed me the ropes? Let me perform in war games of the highest caliber. Do you like this idea? This little private would be so grateful. But he'd do anything his superior ordered him to do. Now, your name intrigues me more than your proposal. Is it real? Does your passport also say Rocco? My passport, if I was ever issued one, would have a much simpler moniker. But I don't want to think about that. My childhood wasn't all shiny and sparkly, if you know what I mean. Plus, I love my new name. It shows everyone I meet that I'm gonna Rocco their world. Uh, you work in this brothel, don't you? Uh, what's your role around here? Ah, uh, my role is the most important one. If Madame allowed us to make a movie like My Godfather Made in Krasno, I'd be the star. I'll gladly believe that. Anyway, gotta go. I zoom in so far. A crooked old man is watching the fire. Tiny flames are reflected in his murky, cataract ridden eyes. Though apparently blind, he senses your presence. You wandered into a flower garden, yet you wish to observe an old sat a sad old stump. Now why is that little thing you? And whenever I visit a new place, I speak to everyone there. You know how it is. If any stone remains unturned, you have to turn it over, correct? Hey, that's my, my motto. Oh yes, and when there's a secret, you have to expose it to the light. So be it, little Pengu. Is it Pengu? Pengao? You can even search my old head for completion's sake, though it won't reveal anything worthwhile. Or will it? The old man winks at you, tugs on his spindly mustache. Well, since you don't seem to mind, I want to ask you a few questions. I'm sure I can. How should I address you? My parents named me Kung Lan. And when I joined a gang of small-time smugglers as a boy, they called me Kung the Hump because of my terrible posture. After the war, when that same gang began to flourish and become known far and wide as Guangzhou, I already was called Wise Kung Lan Li. Since I'm no longer an active member of the business, I for and have forgotten much of my past, I returned to my very first name. So call me Kung Lan, Little Pengu. Now what do you do around here? The old man's unseen gaze darkens. He sighs with a sound like gas escaping, a bottle of carbonated water. I'm not doing anything. What can a man who knows the meaning of life do except sit near the fire, little Pengu? You're saying you learned the meaning of life. So, uh, how's life for you now? Uh, not too bad. I managed to survive that knowledge, despite its soul-sucking nature. I still managed to teach myself how to laugh, smile, and make friends despite the horror of this existence. Uh, teach it to me then. The meaning of life. The man starts pulling on his mustache as if lost in thought. Seems he regrets letting it slip. Well, I cannot teach it to you with words, little Pengu. But I can show it to you, as I was shown when I was a young man. The process requires a certain, how you say, biochemical reaction, as well as a convoluted ritual. You'll have to gather a whole lot of boring ingredients in order to prepare yourself. Since it is a secret ritual, only name the next group of items you must gather after you spent days running around collecting the previous group. A soul-destroying task. If you think the result will be satisfying in some way, well, you're dumber than a bamboo bush who decides to visit a panda sanctuary. I color me intrigued. Tell me, what do I need to get you first? You found a new stone to turn. 
I cannot stop you. Very well. First, I will require logs. A lot of logs, and very heavy. No fewer than 15. And why the heck would you need those? The process is partly what you call a scientific experiment, and partly a mystic ritual. Its nature can be called ritualistic, because you must follow strict rules, such as not knowing the next ex sorry, the next requirement until you gather the current batch of items. And it can be called scientific, because it requires precise amounts of particular ingredients. I'm not asking for anything I will not use in the demonstration, but I will completely understand if you rethink your wish and deny my requests. Honestly, I advise you to decline. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just get back to discussing the mission. It's not a real mission, little Pangu. Please do not think of it as such, or you will be even more disappointed in the end. I just wanted to tell you I'm still looking for the logs. Can we change the subject? Yes, little Pangu. I can answer some questions. Are uh, you welcome to ask, little Pangu? Uh, what can you tell me about Trudegrad? I've seen a lot of cities in my life, little Pangu. If this one lets me die in comfort, surrounded by good folks, I'll declare it the best city in the world, my last breath. Do you share a few rumors with me? I heard that before the war, a rare mineral was discovered in these lands. Aurelium. It is said to be highly radioactive, so the mining operations were a carefully guarded secret. I uh, got it. Want to change the subject? Can we talk about this brothel? Do I look like someone who studies the goings-on in this brothel? Oh no, not me. I only watch the fire, my little Pangu. Even then, my eyes sometimes betray me. Oh, come on, dude. Come clean. Who's your favorite prostitute around here? Oh man, I failed. The man begins to giggle in a raspy, crackling voice and wags his finger at you. Ka ka ka. You flatter me, little Pangu. At my fan stage, with my help, alas. I don't know the last time I failed a speechcraft check. Now you see what goes on when you visit the bar to get a drink, don't you? There is no wisdom in local spirits, little Pangu. Therefore, I bring my own beverage. Finely powdered matcha. The sly wink, the man shows you a tiny thermos uh, covered in green fingerprints. He was hiding it in his sleeve the whole time. A moment later, he makes the thermos vanish again. Matt Cha. Now try this wondrous tea. The old man smilingly pours you a cup. His movements are so stealthy, no one notices. Taking a sip of the hot green liquid, you feel a tsunami of energy and strength race through your veins, as if you're the Emperor of Japan. Or a commoner with enough money and connections to purchase this rare drink. Huh, not bad at all. Hey, can we talk about something else now? Uh, what's a Pangu? Why are you calling me that? Pangu means friend in my native tongue. Little Pangu means little friend. Nothing more. Hope you're not annoyed by us Guangzhou using a few words from our language while speaking yours. Nah, I'm not annoyed at all. I'm glad, little Pangu. In my old age, it is very important to me to use my native words lest I forget them, being stranded in this foreign land. Oh, sure, can we talk about the brothel now? Oh, so we can't try this again. We'll get around to that. Uh, surely you've crossed paths with the owners of this place. What can you tell me about them? I don't know any owners. I only know that venomous snake of a woman who calls herself Madam. She doesn't know any Kung Lan. She only knows what she calls impotent old freeloader who sits here all day. Ha ha ha. That's the kind of relationship we have. I love that woman. You should befriend her, you know. You could learn a lot about this brothel from her. I myself don't know much. Aren't you ashamed to be seen in a place like this? There's a nice cozy tea house almost next door. The tea house is close to my home, but this seat is close to a roaring fire. Now that is what I chose. Fire to warm these ancient bones, little Pangu. I don't know anything apart from this warmth, and what is unknown cannot cause one to feel shame. Ah, uh, right. How about we change the subject? Well, he had a lot more to say than I expected.
A leaning, leaning on a bar in the middle of the hall, Omen winks at you and says, Hi, what have you been drinking today? Dark times call for dark beer. I'd rather ask you a few questions. You got that right. Ask away. Okay, uh, what's your name? Laura the bartender. Madam Clack calls me Garcon for a while, but someone told her that it's French for boy, so she stopped. Now, how's work? I like my job. Of course, the clients are constantly confusing me for one of the working girls. But c'est la vie, as the owner likes to say. Anyway, it's never led to anything actually bad happening. Hmm. Except for that one creep who was a little too excited about asking me out. The Yarpolk and the Chinese guard dragged him out of here so fast, I didn't, have, I didn't even have time to register his face. Well, and there was a, one other time some perv watched my windows from across the road for about 40 minutes. I guess it could even have been the same guy. I didn't really think about it, to be honest. It's just part of the job. Uh, what can you tell me about the brothel? Did you know this place was built after the war? At first glance, you can't tell. But on the second and third, black mold, cockroach colonies, falling plaster. I could go on. I'm afraid the madam would hear and knock my teeth out. Have you heard any interesting rumors? Crocosaurus scare me a lot. Those bastards can reshape their own flesh and bones in all manner of forms. They can even copy the way you look and act. Horrible creatures. Uh, interesting. Tell me another story. Ever heard of the conglomerate? It's supposedly an organization from the Far East that gathers all manner of tech. I doubt they're any kind of threat right now, but in future. Alright, another. Ever seen the Hesper Star at night? Some people think it's actually a spaceship. Intriguing, huh? And another. My neighbor got scammed at the market one day. When she returned hours later with her son-in-law, who's a policeman, there was nothing there but an empty street. These markets don't stay in one place for long. They run the city like nomad caravans. If you ever stumble upon one, be quick with your shopping and watch your back. A friendly merchant shared a strange observation with me. Nobody buys microchips for weeks at a time, and a bunch of people all appear asking for the useless things in heaps. As if from time to time, People are stocking up on them for some incomprehensible reason. I wonder if that's a... I assume that's a reference to the current... GPU... Market. Alright, another one. Uh, thugs are no longer content to just roam outside the city walls. Nowadays, we've got actual armed conflicts inside the city as well. Broad daylight too. And that's just the start. Uh, bandits and thugs are wearing old-timey helmets with mouth guards more and more often nowadays. You might think it's for extra protection, it's actually to keep crows from flying into their mouths. This happens way too often in Trudegrad. Uh, something in the air, I guess, that makes birds crazy. I don't know. Alright, she's out of rumors. Oh, I'll call right there, can I go in here? I can't even lockpick it. Interesting. Alright, I'll just loot for a bit. He's following me around at first, but no, he's just, uh, have to be in his room when he came walking this way. Can't open the lock, huh? Let's see if we can change that. I think if I equip this here, I still get the bonus, right? I think that's what this belt slot is for. Let's see.
All right, so right now it's at 85. If I equip this. Yep, exactly how it works. And a log. I currently have two of my possession. I need 13 more. <laughs> Always a concern with games like this. Like, should I be selling all this junk that I'm finding, or should I, should I hold on to it just in case? I'm probably not going to sell anything. Because he said he's going to ask for a bunch of useless items. And if he's starting with logs, we don't tell him what he's going to ask for in the future. So. Have we spoken to most of the denizens? I haven't spoken to her. I thought he died. Like the animation for sitting down is really weird. Yeah, talk to her, then these two in here. We can take care of that next time. Alright, I'm gonna call the episode here. Next one we'll finish talking to the people in the brothel and go from there. Do I have a quest for this guy? Yep, cool. How many logs do I have? Yeah, I have two. I grabbed the mushrooms because in the 1.1 update for the base game, they added a bunch of ghosts you could find. Plus there are other things that you need mushrooms for as well. So they do come in handy. For side content, so. Anyway, gonna call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.